the classification of soils. So there are many uh, types of classifications, including soils are being uh, classified from the ancient times. In history also, when you uh, discuss about agriculture and other, we can say economic uh, issues, you will discuss about the types of soil. So ancient and medieval times also, there was qualification, some, class, uh, some kind of classification about the soils, right. Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus IS. Right, today we will discuss about the soils of India. Right, this is also a very important topic from, uh, from the point of view of examination, especially from the prelims point of view. Right, so there are, I mean broadly, majorly we can divide uh, the soils of India into 7 to 8 categories. First, we will see the divisions. I mean, there are many bases on which we can divide the soils. First, we will see various types of divisions and the most predominant and accepted divisions. There are seven to eight types of soils are there like alluvial soil, uh, black cotton soil, red and yellow soils, etc. We will see the major and important classification. Right. So, soils are very important as you all know. They are the, we can say, the topmost layer of the earth. Soil is called as the topmost layer of the earth or we can say earth's crust. Right. So it supports various uh, things as you all know trees, grasses, crops, etc. and the numerous life uh, farms. Uh, soil is supporting all of them. Right. So it is a valuable resource. It is one of the we can say important natural resources often we forget to consider the soil in the category of soil resources or the list of soil uh, list of natural resources but it is one of the important natural resources natural resource so bulk of the food all the food and the clothing uh, whatever we are getting the major source is soil right so formation of the soil and the factor factors affecting the soil if you see soil is a mixture of rock debris and organic materials so these are the major two major components of the soil or one is parent rock or it can be alternatively alternatively called as rock debris next one is organic matter or organic material right so basically these are the major we can say factors that uh, contribute to formation of the soil major factors when we see the effect that are affecting the formation of the soil are relief parent material climate vegetation and other life uh, life forms including time so time is also one of the important components along with that parent rock and also other factors like relief uh, parent material we have given vegetation so basically vegetation is the source for organic material vegetation and other life forms including time so these are the major factors these are the major sources i mean the major components of the soil major com components of the soil are rock debris and organic matter the factors that are impact, uh, impacting the formation of the soil are parent rock or parent material relief vegetation including time and some other life forms including human beings and other wildlife uh, they are the important factors which are, which are impacting the formation of the soil right if we see the components of the soil include they include mineral particles humus humus is nothing but organic material only right water water and air with their proportions varying based on the soil type 
So all these components basically based on their, we can say percentage or proportion, the type of soil varies. Type of soil varies, right. So these are the some of the important aspects about the soils. Right, next, if we see the soil layers and the soil profile. So when digging a pit in the field, we can observe the layers of the soil or scientifically or technically we also call it as the soil profile right soil profile or soil layers right this is also important you should uh, know about this right so basically they we have three layers they are called as soil horizons also so the three layers are basically uh, horizon a or layer a layer b and layer c so the surface layer or I mean, whatever the material that is there, it is generally called as horizon O or layer O. And the parent rock or bedrock on which the layers of the soil are being formed, it is also known as horizon R. However, the main layers of the soil are three. They are ABC. The topmost part on the first layer that is known as horizon O. Basically, it comprises of organic debris. Uh, they are partly decomposed the bedrock on which the three layers are formed that is known as horizon or so basically it is the bedrock on which the soils are formed right the first one is horizon a it is the topmost zone with organic materials incorporated with the mineral matter nutrients and water necessary for plant growth so this is the horizon a Next is horizon B. So in the picture, this is the horizon A. So here you can see how it is supporting the roots of the grass that is above, right? Next is uh, horizon B. So it is a transition zone containing matter derived from both the top layer, layer A and below layer that is layer C. So because it is known as, because of this reason, it is known as the transition zone. So it is uh, containing the matter derived from the below and above with some organic matter and a noticeably withered mineral material, right? So this is the horizon B. Next horizon C, it is composed of loose parent material. So this is the parent rock. Uh, whatever the debris of the parent rock is there, the horizon C contains those debris or uh, debris as basically are formed due to withering these kind of processes so horizon c contains them and it is the first stage of soil for formation eventually forming the above two layers so it is the first stage of soil formation first stage of soil formation eventually on which the other two layers will be formed right so this arrangement of uh, soils is known as soil profile with the parent rock or bedrock under me right this is the soil profile right now we will see the important aspect the classification of soils so there are many uh, types of classifications including soils are being uh, classified from the ancient times in history also when you uh, discuss about agriculture and other, you can say economic uh, issues, you will discuss about the types of soil. So ancient and medieval times also, there was qualification, some class, uh, some kind of classification about the soils. Right, first now we will see ancient soil cl classification. So basically in ancient time, two major groups were there. Two major types of soils were, I mean soils were classified into two major groups that is Urvara that is fertile soil and the next one is Usara that is sterile soil. So whatever that is fit for the agriculture or cultivation that is called as Urvara and that soil which is not fit for agriculture or cultivation that is known uh, called that has been called as Usara right. So this is the ancient soil classification. If you see the historical classification in the basically in the medieval ages, so in the 16th century AD, 
soils were classified based on the inherent characteristics and external features such as texture color slope of land and moisture content so based on these factors major soil types have been decided as sandy clayey silty and loamy soils right if you see the colors of the soils they occurred in red color yellow color black color etc so this was some kind of classification we can say in the medieval ages or later medieval ages right so if you see the modern scientific classification icer indian council of agricultural research so it has given some kind of classification based on the usda soil taxonomy right so the types of classifications that uh, that are given uh, given by the icer indian council of agricultural uh, agricultural research are inceptisols entisols alfisols vertisols aridisols altisols molisols and other types of soil so try to remember these names in the prelims examination the list of the soil types can, can be given and a question may be asked like this so what are to which uh, which these types of i mean these uh, we can say names are belong the, these names belong so there may be a question this kind of question in the prelims examination right so now we will see the proper qualification and important qualification uh, sorry classification so the classification based on genesis or origin of the soil color of the soil composition and the location so based on these factors the classification done into these types it is the most acceptable classification well classification so today for uh, academic purpose or also uh, the agric agricultural extension services so whatever the purposes are there we are using the uh, this uh, type of qualification sorry classification that is uh, done based on the genesis color composition and the location of the soil so that soil types are alluvial soil black soils red and yellow soils uh, laterite soil arid soils saline soils peaty soils and forest soils so these are the we can say eight types of soil eight types of soils that are given and this is the most we can say accepted classification of the soils right now in the image we will see the location of the soils so the areas that are located in light green color those are mountain soils right so <clears throat> the we can say the soils that are uh, colored in we can say thick yellow or dark yellow they are alluvial alluvial soils right so these are uh, soils that are in gray color they are uh black soils the area which is located in or uh, depicted in light yellow it is arid soil right so here also in eastern coastal area we can see the uh, alluvial soil and the soils that are depicted in red color those are areas that are located in the red color they are red and yellow soils right and some uh, soils which are located uh, which are colored in orange they are basically the laterite soils laterite soils their major location is in we can say kerala and some part of the karnataka in the western side of western ghats because these areas witness a lot of rainfall right and also in the odisha some parts of odisha and bihar also the laterite soils are located right these are uh, these are the major types of soils and uh, some other soil type is also there that is uh, peat soils so peat soils are especially located in areas where heavy rainfall is there heavy rainfall is there and a lot of i mean the area or that area is uh, having heavy forest forest also present 
and the ground if you observe it is it has huge organic matter organic matter so wherever the rainfall is very high like some areas mega some areas of meghalaya and in some areas of bihar and also in kerala regions we will see the pt soils right some other soils is there that uh, those are saline soils or we can also call them as uh, <coughs> degraded soils also saline soils so basically where the we can say flood irrigation is more predominant especially in the green revolution areas green revolution areas green revolution areas so earlier in green revolution areas the predominant irrigation method was flood irrigation flood irrigation so uh, agricultural fields were flooded with the water so when drainage is not proper that water again is not being removed so whatever the salts are there in the water they have accumulated in the soil so over the time they have become those soils have become unfit for agriculture unfit for agriculture so we can see we can find these areas basically uh, in the green revolution areas especially in the punjab haryana regions and also some parts of tamil nadu and andhra pradesh also these uh, salty soil uh, saline soils can be found so this is the we can say physical distribution of the uh, soil types in india now we will study in detail about each type of soil right first one is alluvial soil and it is the most important soil type we can say so it is the they are prevalent in the northern plain and also river valleys covering approximately 40% of the country's total area right they are depositional soils so the sediments that are being brought by the rivers rivers so they are formed right so especially in the northern india if you see the uh, ganges and brahmaputra plains so the uh, sediments and uh, de uh, deposits brought by the himalayan rivers himalayan rivers they are formed so they are we have studied ganges or the ganges plains are the most one of the most fertile fertile plains not only in india but also across the world right so they are found in northern plains river valleys and even extending into parts of rajasthan and gujarat so in the map we have seen some parts of the alluvial soils they are extending to uh, gujarat and rajasthan also right so variability and composition if you see the soils vary in nature from sandy to loamy to clay right generally rich in potash and uh, but poor in phosphorus right so according to the minerals we have to use fertilizers right so to supplement whatever the minerals that particular soil type is lacking right so further alluvial soils can be divided into two major categories one is khadar and the next one is bangar so khadar is the new alluvium it is deposited annually by floods it enriches the soil with fine sales so whatever the sediment that is every year if it is being replaced or deposited that is known as the khadar that is the new alluvium soil so second category is uh, bangar that is old alluvium so it is located away from the rivers away from the rivers right so it is deposited away from the flood plains it is known as old alluvium right so both these types soil types contain calcareous uh, materials we call them as kankars so they are more loamy and clayey in the lower and middle ganges plains and in the brahmaputra valley sand content decreases from west to east so try to remember these facts also sand content decreases from west to east right 
color varies from light gray to ash gray depending on factors like depth deposition texture and maturity right so geographical distribution we have understood uh, found in various regions like northern plains we have seen river valleys we have seen delta deltas in the east coast so whatever the deltas are there mahanadi delta godavari delta krishna delta and even the kaveri delta pennar and kaveri delta so in coastal these coastal regions also it can be found apart from that we can see it in the northern uh, himalayan rivers area so this uh, ganges plain ganga yamuna plain and also the brahmaputra plain so if in the image if you see so this is the <coughs> image of the alluvial soils so we can see the fine it is made with fine granular material the material is very fine right so alluvial soils are very very intensively uh, cultivated they are uh, known for their fertility so we can cultivate here two to three crops uh, crops yearly so the, they are well suited for uh, crops like rice wheat and other crops like maize etc they are well suited for these areas right so they uh, support wide range of crops contribute significantly to the agricultural productivity so because of these soil types only the ganga yamuna uh, region or the we can say ganga yamuna plains they are the highest dense areas highly i mean population density is very high highly uh, high density population is there because these soils are supporting food crops uh, apart from other crops they are supporting food crops so because of the these areas are highly populated right so this is about the alluvial alluvial soils right next important category black soils we also call them as regu soil or black cotton soil we call it as black cotton soil because they are most suited for cotton cultivation right so they support cotton crop very well because of this reason they are also called as the black cotton soils they are also referred to as rigur soils basically they are self plowing in nature right so when moisture is not, uh, not available cracks will develop cracks will develop in the black uh, black soil opening the gaps and air will enter into that so because of this reason they are uh, called as the self plowing uh, 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 soils because of this reason also they are called as regur soils right so if we see the spread of the black cotton soils they spread in much of the deccan plateau so whatever peninsular uh, plateau we have seen so most part of that plateau is covered by the uh, black cotton soils Uh, spanning across across the states like Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, and in some parts of the Tamil Nadu, right? So, if we see uh, their uh, extension or distribution, they are predominantly found in the upper reaches of the Krishna and Godavari rivers, as well as in northwestern part of the Deccan Plateau, right? If we see the physical characteristics, they are generally clayey. deep and impermeable i mean what water do not percolate down uh, uh from these soils so they are impermeable so exhibits a swelling and a stickness when wet so when they are wet they exhibit these characteristics and a shrinking with wide cracks when dried leading to a self plowing phenomenon so because of that reason also they are called as regu soils so retain moisture for extended periods due to slow absorption and loss of moisture aiding crops like especially rain fed crops during the dry seasons so because of this water hold, holding we can say characteristic they also support the long duration crops such as cotton right so this is the these are the characteristics of the black cotton soils If you see the chemical composition, they are rich, uh, rich in lime, iron, magnesium, and aluminum. Aluminum. 
so they are rich in these minerals right so it also contains potash but lacks phosphorus phosphorus nitrogen and also organic matter so remember phosphorus also uh, not in sufficient quantities in aluminum uh, sorry alluvial soil so here also phosphorus is lacking right so color if you see it ranges from deep black, black to gray color so here in the image you can see the uh, uh, black cotton soil next another important soil type is red and yellow soils right so they will uh, develop on crystalline and igneous rocks so he, these soils also yellow and red soils they can be find in the margins of the peninsular area margins of the peninsular area or in the margins of the uh, uh, black cotton soils soils right so they are predominantly found in areas of low rain rainfall in the eastern and the southernmost part of the duckan plateau so they occupy long stretches along the piedmont zone of western ghats so they develop reddish color due to the wide distribution of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rocks so remember this factor basically they get the red color because of the iron iron in uh, crystalline and mica presence of iron in uh, crystalline and metamorphic rocks so they generally fertile when fine grained but poor in fertility when coarse grained and found in dry upland areas right they are typically poor in nitrogen phosphorus and humus so this is about the red soils if you see about the yellow soils they are found in similar uh, regions as red soil including parts of odisha chatisgarh right so they are predominantly found in odisha chatisgarh and the southern parts of the middle gangetic plain so they appears yellow when hydrated right so when <coughs> uh, when they are hydrated they appear yellow so similar fertility uh, fertility characteristics to red soil so most of the characteristics for red and yellow red and yellow soils are similar because of this reason they categorize them as together right so with fine grained uh, when fine grained they have more they are more fertile when they are coarse grained they are uh, less fertile right if you see the geographical di distribution of both type of soils they are predominantly found in the eastern and southern parts of the deccan plateau along with portions of we have seen the states odisha chatisgarh and other states right next important soil type is laterite soils laterite soil right so they the word laterite soil is derived from the late uh, latin word that is which means bricks so basically this type of soil it is uh, predominantly used for making bricks it is suitable for making bricks because of this reason it is uh, called as laterite soil so the major characteristic of it is it is being developed in areas where the temperature and the rainfall are very high so it results from intense leaching due to tropical rains so i mean it is basically located in the areas where the rainfall is uh, very high and uh, there is lot of leaching of soil due to heavy rainfall so uh, from the soil when the heavy rainfall is there lime and silica these are leached away leaving behind soils rich in iron oxide and aluminum compounds right so humus compound or content or the organic matter it is rapidly removed by bacteria thriving in high temperatures so the humus content is uh, quickly removed by the bacteria due to high temperatures right characteristics if you see they are poor in organic matter because it is removed by the bacteria uh, nitrogen is also lacking similarly phosphate and calcium 
all these minerals are lacking the excess uh, minerals that are present are oxides and uh, oxide and iron oxide and potash so these two minerals are excessively present in the laterite soils they are not naturally suitable for cultivation due to poor fertility because whatever the fertile material is there it is being removed by the heavy downpour right it requires application of manures and fertilizers to become fertile for cultivation so because of this reason basically it is more suitable for the uh, we can say plantation crops or we can say uh, to be specific tree crops so because of this reason uh, in the regions lateral uh, laterite soil regions like kerala etc the rubber rubber the plantation or tree crops like rubber and also cashew nut right these type of we can say uh, pla, pla, i mean <laughs> tree crops are grown right geographical distribution if you see they are predominantly found in the higher reaches of the peninsular plateau uh, commonly found in karnataka kerala tamil nadu madhya pradesh and the hilly areas of odisha and assam right suitability for agriculture if you see so red laterite uh, laterite soils in tamil nadu andhra pradesh and kerala they are more suitable for tree crop crops like cashew nut right often cut into bricks for use in house construction due to their durability so because of this reason only the word laterite has become so here in the picture you can see the uh, laterite soil next are the arid soils so arid soils are generally you find it in areas where regions where the rainfall is rainfall is deficient okay see so mostly you will find this area in rajasthan all right so if you see the color it range from red to brown in color generally sandy in structure and saline in nature because there is not sufficient water to wash away the saline content or salt contents right so some areas have highly salt content yielding common salt by evaporating the saline water so we can see the harvest uh, harvest of the uh, salt in some lakes or in some wetlands of the rajasthan also especially the sambar lake so it is a salt water lake so some areas are uh, very salty so we can produce salt from these uh, areas where some of the water is present right so they lack moisture broadly they uh, predominantly they lack lack moisture and humus due to dry clim uh, dry climate high temperature and accelerated evaporation right so nitrogen here is insufficient while phosphate content is normal so lower horizon contain kankar means boulder small boulders due to increasing calcium content downwards right this kankar for layer formation it restricts water infiltration but helps retain soil moisture when irrigation is available so typically we can find them in western rajasthan exhibiting arid topography so the adjacent areas to the desert thar desert are generally this arid soil areas so they are poor in quality containing little humus and organic material because of this reason they are unfit mostly majority of the time they are unfit for cultivation right so better these lands can be used for we can say agroforestry agroforestry or we can convert them into with some effort we can convert them into grazing pastures right so these uh, these lands can be converted into some useful purpose by uh, either converting them into grazing pastures or uh, uh, using them for agroforestry 
next important i mean type of soil types are saline soils so they all they are also known as usara soils we have seen the classification in the beginning right so they contain large proportions of sodium potassium and magnesium right they are generally infertile and do not support veg <coughs> vegetative growth due to high salt content right they occur in arid and semi arid regions because there is uh, they occur generally in arid and semi arid regions because the water sufficient water is not there to wash out the salts wash out the salty minerals like sodium potassium and magnesium right if we see the characteristics of these soils it ranges from sandy to loamy and they lack nitrogen and calcium most salts i mean more salts due to dry climate and poor drainage they are widespread in western gujarat deltas of eastern coast and sundarban areas of western ghats so due to improper we can say uh, irrigation management in green revolution areas green revolution areas also these saline soils have been developed of late so if we understand the factors that are contributing to salinity are the southwest monsoon in ranaf kutch it brings salt particles depositing them in depositing them as crusts this is one reason one reason sea water intrusions in delta deltas they promote saline soil occurrence so sea water when it i mean it comes into the uh, normal land so salt content that is uh, present in the sea water it will remain on the sand, uh, soil and the soil will be converted into saline soil similarly intensive cultivation and excessive irrigation especially in areas of green revolution led to soil salinity so this is we can say the man made cause man made cause for emergence of saline soils intensive cultivation including excessive irrigation and also we can say further one more factor excessive or improper use of fertilizers excessive or improper use of fertilizers also led to the formation of the saline soils right so the capillary act action from excessive irrigation and a dry climate deposits salts on the soil surface and because of this reason they become saline soils so we can manage and address this salinity by some proper measures we will understand those measures so addition of dip, gypsum so it is a manure and a fertilizer so by addition of gypsum uh, in areas if gypsum is added uh, in uh, saline uh, soils so <laughs> the problem of so uh, salts can be addressed to a certain extent so these uh, gypsum it will we can say uh, dilute the excessive salt that is present in the soil and make the soil for fit for agriculture fit for agriculture so it is advised to farmers that gypsum will be added gypsum has to be added to the soils in the uh, majorly areas which are we can say impacted by the green revolution especially the regions of punjab and haryana so that they again the soils can be used for cultivation of crops right so here in the image you can see the salty uh, saline soils next are peaty soils right so peaty soils are not that predominant in india they are not that predominant in india however few areas which witness heavy rainfall the forest areas heavy rainfall is forested areas we find the peaty right peaty soil so found in areas with the heavy rainfall and the humidity with the abundant vegetation of growth accumulate large quantities of dead organic material resulting in rich humus and organic content 
right so major difference between the uh, laterite soil laterite soil and the pt soil don't confuse with them so laterite soil they also lack organic material conditions are similar uh climate is humid humid rainfall is high but here in laterite soils the organic material is absent uh, the organic material is consumed by bacteria due to high temperature however in pt soil areas uh, because of the presence of we can say forest heavy forest organic material is material is used so we can see the organic matter content at some times can reach up to 40 to 50 percent so this is the major difference between the uh, laterite soil and pt soils right so if you see their nature typically they are heavy and black in color with some areas being alkaline right characteristics of the pt soils they are rich in humus and organic content due to accumulation of dead organic matter so the we can say leaves that are shed by the trees so they accumulate and they form the dead organic matter right so they formed in areas with abundant vegetation growth and high levels of rainfall and humidity so black in color with some areas exhibiting alkaline characteristic geographical distribution if you see they are widely found in northern part of bihar southern part of uttarakhand and the coastal areas of west bengal odisha and tamil nadu right so these are the some of the areas which contain the pt soils right so here you can see uh, the accumulation of we can say organic matter and these are the pt soils the next and uh, last category is forest soils so basically they are found in forest areas or also in mountain areas mountain area so basically the himalayan regions and some parts of the western ghats and western ghats where the forest is there so there we can find the forest soils so they formed in forest areas with sufficient rainfall so wherever rainfall is available in forest areas and in mountain areas they can be found structure and texture vary depending on uh, depending on mountain environment where they are formed right so if we see the characteristics they are loamy and silty on valley sides so on valley sides they are loamy and silty coarse grained in upper slopes so upper slopes of the mount mountains they are coarse grained they experience a denudation in snow bound areas like uh, himalayas especially western himalayas leading to acidic soil with the low humus content right so soils generally found in lower valleys are fertile so the soils that are there in the lower of the valleys they are fertile however uh, the soil that is located in the higher areas of the mountains they are generally coarse grained and they are not suitable for agriculture so the soils that are found in the lower valleys are they are fertile right so this is some information about the forest soil right these are the eight types of uh, soils that we can find in india and we have discussed their characteristics their presence and also their physical features right so now we will understand something briefly about so about the we can say soil degradation so this here in the image you can see the forest soils right so now we will understand about soil degradation right one of the major aspects reasons for soil degradation is soil erosion right and also soil de <coughs> we can say unsustainable use of unsustainable use of we can say soil for cultivation right so soil degradation is declining soil fertility due to nutritional status decline and the soil depth reduction caused by erosion and misuse so this can be defined as soil 
degradation the main factor leading to deplete, uh, depleting soil resource e i mean it is the major factor soil degradation degradation is the ma- major factor leading to depleting soil i mean depleting soil res- uh, resource in india that is we can say erosion erosion is the major reason right so degree of degradation it varies based on topography wind vela- velocity and also rainfall apart from that the man made factors or anthropogenic factors they are also contributing heavily to the soil degradation right so soil erosion if you understand it is the one of the major factors of soil degradation so it is the destruction of the top soil cover right it is the destruction of the top layer of the earth that is soil cover right it is caused by both natural and man made factors so human activities such as deforestation cultivation we can say unsustainable cultivation and grazing we can say uncontrolled grazing and urbanization all these are contributing to soil erosion wind and water action they are all the they are the natural cause we can say natural natural factors for soil erosion so wind activity and water activity is there the top soil will also get removed but they uh, they are natural factors however the man made factors like grazing deforestation urb- urbanization we can say they are the major concerns right if we understand the types uh, types and effects of the soil erosion so wind erosion it is significant in arid and semi arid regions like regions in rajasthan so the uh, rajasthan we have jhar desert so due to the action of the wind the uh, sand particles that will be transported and they will be deposited on the good soil so because of this reason the margins of the desert those areas will also be subjected to erosion and uh, we can say that is being transformed into desert so the wind erosion in the desert areas uh, arid and semi arid regions like rajasthan it is removing the top soil so because of this reason also uh, the uh, i mean soil erosion is occurring water erosion it is significant in regions with heavy uh, rainfall and steep slope so this we can see in the northeastern region and also in the western ghats region this type of erosion is occurring so best example is uh next is uh next example best example for water erosion is the chambal areas so the uh, chambal ravines they uh, ravines they are uh, they have formed due to the erosion of water next type is sheet erosion sheet erosion means the entire top layer is being removed as it is right so it occurs on level on level lands i mean plain lands after heavy showers removing the finer and more t- uh, fertile top soil next type is gully erosion so it is common on uh, steep slopes dip- uh, deepening uh, with rainfall fragmenting agricultural lands leading to bad land topography right so ravines that another example is ravines that are widespread in regions like chambal basin tamil nadu and west bengal so these are uh, these are caused by also these gully erosion is also caused by water only so the examples are ravines that are developed in chambal area and also in tamil nadu and west bengal right soil erosion it leads to reduced the soil fertility increased the flood risk and damage to agricultural lands right so here this is we can say the soil is uh, being removed from here this we can uh, say it is the erosion of soil also we have seen different types of erosions gully erosion sheet erosion uh, etc we have seen. so uh, factors that are contributing to soil degradation are so some of the factors we will observe deforestation it removes the vegetation that helps to prevent erosion and adds human humus to soil so deforestation is the major factor that is contributing to the 
soil degradation next is over irrigation it leads to soil solidization of arid land sorry solidization of arable land arable land means la land that is suitable for agriculture suitable for agriculture another factor chemical fertilizers without organic manure they harm soil fertility in the long run this also we have understood and also the river valley projects uh, beneficiaries of the green revolution they are affected by soil uh, <coughs> degradation right half of india's total land is estimated to be under some degree of degradation so this is a grave concern half of the indian uh, we can say soil is it is estimated to be under some kind of degradation so here in the image you can see the degraded land so uh, we can take some conservation measures for protecting the soil and preventing the soil erosion and the soil degradation right so soil conservation is aimed at maintaining soil fertility preventing soil erosion and exhaustion and improving degraded soil condition So remedial measures for soil conservation are contour bunding, contour terracing, regulated forestry, controlled grazing, cover cropping, mixed farming, and crop rotation. These are the effective measures. So try to remember these measures. All these contribute for soil conservation. Similarly, efforts to prevent gully erosion. So gully erosion can be prevented by gully plugging. so here the image we have seen it is uh, we can say here also or in the earlier hemos so we can say this is one type of gully erosion so if we plug this area we we can prevent further loss of soil from here so whatever the soil it is coming it will be accumulated and gradually the soil will be stored here again this gully will be we can say removed so by gully plugging we can prevent the gully erosion Right. So efforts to prevent gully erosion and the control uh, formation through terracing, sick dams, and uh, planting cover vegetation they are crucial for preventing gully erosion. Right. So in semi and uh, further in semi and uh, semi arid areas, protecting cultivable lands from encroachment by sand dunes through shelter belts of uh, trees and agroforestry it is important. so through shelter belts shelter belts and agroforestry we can prevent the further we can say expansion of the sand dunes so earlier i have given the example how the wind takes the sand and deposits on the fertile area so by creating shelter belts of trees and also through agro uh, agroforestry we can further prevent the spread of the sand dunes right right some government has also taken some measures so ultimately but ultimately the responsibility for land conservation it lies with the people who operate on it and the benefit from it so benefitly uh, finally the ultimate responsibility of conserving the soil it rests on the community which is using the soil right so this is some uh, some information about the conservation of soil right now we will see uh, some of the questions that are asked from this topic first question it is asked in 2023 right the question is consider the following statements statement 1 is the soil in tropical rain forest is uh, rich in nutrients right second statement the high temperature and moisture of the tropical rain forest cause dead organic material in the soil to decompose quickly yes the second statement is correct we have studied it and the first statement is incorrect the soil in tropical rain forest is rich in nutrients this is incorrect statement because uh, in the tropical rain forest areas the rainfall is also high rainfall is high so whatever the nutrients are there they will be we can say washed away washed away by the heavy rains that are that are i mean 
that are there in the tropical areas so statement 1 is incorrect and the statement 2 is correct so correct option is option d statement 1 is and uh, statement 1 is incorrect and the statement 2 is correct right next question it is asked in 2021 the question is the black cotton soil in india has been formed due to the withering of so options are brown forest soil fissures fissure of volcanic rock granite and uh, schist shale and limestone so uh, we have understood the uh, peninsular plateau it is formed due to the volcanic activity only volcanic activity and the deformation of the rocks that are formed in the volcanic activity so the black cotton soil also which is predominantly located in the uh, we can say peninsular area so it is also formed due to fissure of volcanic rock so the correct option is option b right these are the some of the questions that are asked in the previously in the examination so you can understand that you should be aware of the some minor aspects about the soils also right so this is uh, it for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day right. see you next time